The next step in this tutorial is to set up our data model. Now this is foundational, or fundamental to our project. It essentially is defining the blueprints for our data structures. And once we set this up, it uh, lets us unleash the power of Visual Studio and .NET Core to build out a working web application with very little coding required. So the initial data model that we're going to set up for this sample project has three entities. We have courses, we have students, and then we have enrollments as an entity that's essentially connecting courses to students. So we have a many to many relationship here between students and courses and enrollments is like a link entity or a join entity that essentially facilitates this many to many relationship. So one course can have many enrollments, one student can have many enrollments, and that essentially overall creates a many to many relationship. So the first entity we will set up uh, is the student entity. And we will do this by following the instructions uh, in, in this tutorial step. So well, firstly, we need to create a models folder in the project folder in Visual Studio. Now we have to be careful where we create this. So we need to create it in the root level. So that means right clicking on John's test project and creating a folder within the top level view. So we go to add and then new folder. And that will create a new folder here, which we can name models. And you can see there that it's on the same level as pages, data and areas. Note that we don't want to create it within the pages folder. It would still potentially work, but it would be messy and it would go against convention. So we've created our models folder. We then need to create a student.cs class. So to do this, we right click on the models folder. We go add again and we will choose new item. And this will then give us some options uh, to create a new item. So in our add new item window, we can actually use the top option, which is class. It's just a basic class that we want. You can see there are loads of other options, um, some of which we might be using later on, such as an empty razor page. But here we just want a class. We can set the name down here and we need to set that to student, I believe. Let's double check. Yeah, so it's singular. That's important. Make sure you name it according to convention. So student.cs and we'll click add. So when this new file has been created, we can now see it successfully in the Solution Explorer and it's open for us. It's already set up the namespace for us, which is the project name dot models. So this is specifying to .NET Core that this is within the models namespace. So it doesn't get confused with potentially other uh, student classes elsewhere in a project, for example. And now what we need to do is copy and paste these attributes of this student entity and put this into the class. Again, be careful what you're copying and pasting. We don't want to duplicate any code. We just want to put these attributes within the student class. And just to explain what's going on. So all of these are public attributes, which means they're publicly accessible within the code. We're defining the types. So ID is an integer. Uh, last name and first mid name are strings. And then enrollment date is a date time. And then we have a collection which relates to enrollments. Now we're getting a red underlined error here because this type, this entity type doesn't exist yet. And that's what we're going to do next. The next two steps are to set up the enrollment entity and the course entity.